The Hafley Keating experiment involved synchronized atomic clocks that verified the concept of time dilation. The experiment utilized 12 clocks in total, four of which remained on Earth, and these were the reference clocks. But we'll talk about the significance in a moment. The second set of clocks were flown in a plane in the eastward direction around Earth twice. And the third group of four clocks were flown on a different plane in a westward direction around Earth twice as well. After the plane returned to Earth, the time that's elapsed on the clocks were compared to the ones on Earth, which were the reference clocks. When compared to these clocks, the clocks that were flown in the east direction were found to have lost time. That means they have measured a shorter time compared to the ones on Earth. In contrast, the clocks that were flown in the west direction gained time, which means the time that were measured by these clocks were longer in duration compared to the ones on Earth. This disparity in time, measured by very accurate synchronized atomic clocks, demonstrates the effect of time dilation. The clocks that lost time were due to the fact that each second becomes slower, and the clocks that gain time were due to the fact that each second became faster relative to the clocks that were on Earth. The time discrepancy between the clocks that went on an eastward journey and a westward journey were on the scale of nanoseconds. This is because the velocity of the plane was not at a significant proportion of light speed, so the effect of time dilation will be very, very minimal. However, despite the limited application of special relativity, the observed time discrepancy was consistent with the predictive values produced by using the time dilation equation. The eastward journey was shown to have a shorter time compared to the clocks on Earth, and the westward journey was shown to have a longer time compared to the clocks on Earth. This is because the eastward clocks were moving in the eastward direction relative to the time on Earth. So while the clocks on Earth elapsed a time t, the clocks that were moving on the eastward plane experienced a shorter time t naught. So each nanosecond on the clocks that were traveling eastward becomes slower, therefore giving rise to a shorter time. On the other hand, we can understand why the clocks on the westward journey gain time by pretending that the clocks on Earth were moving eastward relative to the westward clocks. So let's pretend the westward clocks were stationary, and if Earth is rotating from a west to east direction, relative to these clocks, the clocks that were on Earth will be moving in the eastward direction. So similar to the comparison to before, the clocks on Earth will then elapse a shorter time, this will be t naught, while the westward clocks will have a longer time, which is t. In other words, each nanosecond elapsed by the clocks on Earth would have been slower compared to the ones on the westward plane, giving rise to a shorter time on the clocks on Earth. The westward clocks will elapse a longer time compared to the clocks on Earth. Time dilation and length contraction are also demonstrated and validated by experiments involving muons. Muons are cosmic particles that are formed in Earth's atmosphere, and they can be detected at the top of mountain ranges, such as an experiment that was conducted at the top of Mount Washington. When muons are formed, they travel at a very high speed, such as 0.9c. This velocity allows them to reach sea level. Despite the high velocity, the average lifetime of muons is relatively short. The rest time is 2.2 microseconds, where micro is 10 to the power of minus 6. This extremely short lifetime means that only a small number of muons will survive and be detected at sea level, even though the muons are traveling at such a high velocity. An average lifetime of 2.2 microseconds means some muons will decay shorter than 2.2 microseconds, while the other ones will survive longer than 2.2 microseconds. We would expect the ones with a longer lifetime to be the ones that will be detected at the sea level. However, what the scientists found in this experiment is that the number of muons detected at the bottom of the mountain was actually higher than predicted when they considered the short lifetime of these muons. When they consider time dilation and its effect on the lifetime of muons when they travel at such a high velocity, the calculated results using the time dilation equation become consistent with the experimental observation, 
that is the number of muons that are actually detected at sea level. The results of this experiment explains both time dilation as well as length contraction. For time dilation, muons must have experienced a shorter time relative to an inertial reference frame on Earth. That is, the average lifetime T0 of 2.2 microseconds, this would have been the rest time, that is the time measured from a muon's frame of reference. On Earth, this would have been T, which is longer than T0, depending on the velocity of the muons. Now, remember that the velocity of the muons is 0.9 AC, and at this velocity, the lifetime of muon, as measured by someone on Earth, that is the scientists that conduct this experiment, would have been way longer. And due to the longer lifetime measured from this frame of reference, it explains why more muons will be able to survive and therefore be detected at sea level. The greater proportion of muons detected at sea level can also be explained using length contraction. The distance between the location at which the muons are being formed and sea level is roughly 10 kilometers. This distance is measured from the perspective of the scientist that conducted this experiment. So therefore, this is L0. This is the rest distance between the finish and the starting point of the muon's motion. Which means, from the muon's perspective, the distance would have been contracted according to the equation of length contraction. At a velocity of 0.98c, the distance measured from the muon's inertial reference plane would have been much shorter than 10 kilometers. This allows the muons with a relatively short half-life of 2.2 microseconds to reach Earth without decaying as the distance has now become much shorter for the muons. And therefore, the experiment involving muons verifies both time dilation and length contraction. Evidence from particle accelerators also supports time dilation. Particle accelerators are machines that accelerate small particles to very high velocities for us to study the effects of special relativity. A recent experiment was conducted involving lithium ions. Lithium ions were fired at 0.338 C and scientists measured the time taken for electrons in the lithium ion to transition between energy states. Recall that an electron in a ground state, when it receives a sufficient amount of energy, for example in the form of electromagnetic radiation, it can move to an excited state. And this electron can then return to its ground state by emitting the same amount of energy. In this experiment, the time was measured between the absorption and the emission of energy, that is the time taken for the electrons to transition between the ground state and the excited state. The frequency of transition in lithium ions that were moving at such a high velocity was served as a moving clock. That is, the time interval between the energy absorption and emission was used as a timekeeper. At the same time, in the same experiment, transitions of electrons within lithium ions that were not moving served as a stationary clock. In other words, the time interval between the absorption and the emission of energy was also measured for lithium ions that were not moving. The moving clock's time and the stationary clock time were then compared. It was shown that the frequency of transition of electrons in moving lithium ions was slower compared to the stationary lithium ions. This experiment showed that the electronic transition of lithium ions also obeyed the effects of time dilation. The transition in moving lithium ions was T0, while the ones in the stationary lithium ions was T. T0 was a slower time because each second becomes slower. 